This is a short video on the Airbus A320 door uh, alleviation function uh, from Flight Sim Center. And here we have the FCOM. It says the flight control normal lock covers the three axis control, flight envelope protection, and alleviation of maneuver loads. So, in this uh, video, we are going to discuss uh, the Airbus A320 load elevation function or LAF. The guys read it on the Airbus A320 must have definitely read the FCOM. Uh, but the FCOM is very short and doesn't cover the LA function in much detail. And in this video, we're going to discuss uh, the LA function in much detail. Okay, here we have uh, an aircraft in normal flight with a load factor of 1. Load factor of 1 means uh, the lift and the weight are equal and are balanced. And here you see the normal wing loading and bending. There is not much uh, bending on the wing. Now you see the high aspect ratio wings like on the 320 and especially wings with the shark lids can uh, lead to significant fuel savings due to the reduction in induced drag. But the high aspect ratio wings have certain structural drawbacks due to the span and wing tip distance from wing attachment points. So due to the large span, the bending moment increases, resulting in higher structural weight due to requirement of stronger wings to withstand the bendings. So it means uh, the longer the wing, the stronger it has to be and to make them stronger, the weight increases. So the heavier uh, uh, weight on the wing outweighs the benefits of the high aspect ratio. So in order to achieve an effective performance benefit, a lightweight wing is needed, which in turn leads to very flexible structures. So as we see now, we have an aircraft uh, without a load elevation function installed. And you see uh, the wing bending due to higher lift. So you can see significant bending on the wing. And now this aircraft has got a load factor of 2.5 Gs. So now to, in, to have an increased load factor, the aircraft angle of attack is increased, which increases the lift generated by the wings. So the spanwise lift distribution remains the same. The spanwise lift distribution is designed such that it is as close as possible to an elliptical lift distribution, which reduces uh, the induced drag significantly. And we have uh, discussed the elliptical lift distribution in uh, much detail in our aerodynamics uh, lesson. So you see now we have uh, the aircraft with the load elevation function installed. The aircraft is uh, with the same load factor but you can see the difference in wing bending. Now how do we achieve that? We got it through the load elevation function which reduces the wing structural loads. So the strategy behind LFA is to use, to wing, use, to use the wing control surfaces to move the center of lift inboard during maneuvers, such that the wing root bending moment is reduced. So therefore in applying LAF, the objective is to reduce structural loading. On the Airbus A320, the LAF is achieved through deflection of the two ailerons only or uh, the two ailerons associated with the spoilers 4 and 5. So you see we have two sub functions. One uses uh, in the stable maneuver and the other one is used in gust detection which uses the ailerons and the spoilers together. So you see how we reduce the lift on the wingtip with the upward deflection of the ailerons on the both wings which has reduced the wing lift on the tip but the total lift remains the same on the wing. Okay, the second sub function is used during a gust detection. 
Okay, so now we see the effect of gust on load factor. So an aircraft in level flight uh, with a load factor 1 and an angle of attack for example 5 degrees. Here you see here this is the relative air wind and we have the chord line. So the angle between the relative air and the chord line is the angle of attack. So we have a 5 degree angle of attack an aircraft in level flight. Now we have a gust which makes an angle of 10 degrees so now the angle of attack has become 10 degrees so you see here the gust causes a change in the load factor due to the change in wing angle of attack so for example and a change in the wing angle of attack of 1 degree changes cl by 0.1 so for 5 degree angle of attack change the increased cl is 0.5 so you see here the load factor is increased by 50%. Now here we have an aircraft in level flight with a load factor of 1. And we have gust. So the turbulence and gust cause variations in the aerodynamic forces and moments that are applied to the aircraft structure. We have seen that how gust affects uh, the load factor. And in addition to the structural loads, uh, this also causes uh, passenger discomfort and anxiety. So now we have the second LF sub function activated in case of gust detection. So in this, we use the ailerons and the spoilers together. So you see here how we have significantly reduced the lift on towards the wing tip, but the total lift remains the same on the wing. So in case we have uh, continuous turbulence and and uh, we can use the two sub functions together and the LF is available when the aircraft is in clean configuration only and in normal law. And here we have some additional information. The LF becomes active when the difference between the aircraft load factor and the pilot demand load factor exceeds 0.3 G. So we have an aircraft flying with a constant uh, for example load factor of uh, 1g and now the pilot demanded load factor is 1 and we have an increase in load factor due to the gust so this uh, change in load factor by 0.3 and more causes the LF to become active and the ailerons are deflected along with the spoilers so the load elevation function inhibited with the flaps lever not in zero position, speed below 200 knots, slide flaps, wing tip brake engage, and pitch direct lock. And these are the components used on the LAF accelerometers to detect the change in G. And we have the LAF accelerometers. Hope uh, this video has been uh, informative. Thank you, guys. See you next time.